Blessings, beloveds. Welcome back. Check out my mic. It, um, I've had such a weird day, so this thing broke. There's that. Uh, earlier, I did this recording um, as an audio. Somehow it had a glitch, didn't work out. I was pretty pissed off, actually. That's why I'm wearing red. Red makes me feel, well, quite energized, but it can get me quite fired up too. Anyway, long story short, I thought to myself, okay, this is worth actually just um, redoing because I've got some interesting things to share. And it's all about Mars and Chiron, Eris, Pluto, a few other things thrown in the mix as well. Two of Wands is the card that came up. I'll explain how that sort of fits in. Um, this morning I was feeling quite sort of deflated, depleted, defeated, all the D words, depressed, um, very Saturn, sort of heavy energy. Uh, and it took me a while to even sit down and do my recording. I was actually just really trying to tune in and reflect on this mars Chiron opposition. And, um, you know, there's been a lot going on, of course, in the entire world, but there's been a lot going on here in the location that I reside in at the moment, you know, with protests and um, tyranny and um, oppression and suppression, all the Saturn words, basically, uh, very heavy energies, um, not only in the ether, but just with the uh, narrative that's playing out the level of oppression that's going on is is just inconceivable uh violence uh you know ordinary civilians getting bashed and smashed on the ground just for walking within a vicinity of where protests might have taken place it's just you know it's 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 incomprehensible i don't want to focus too much on that because um it's pretty dark it's pretty draining and uh, it doesn't uplift us at all. So I want to try and kind of um, focus on more the the spiritual warrior, which is what I think this Chiron Mars opposition is really pointing to. Um, and the card, the two of wands that came up, I was asking the tarot to just speak to us about this this Chiron Mars. What's what's one of the key messages that we can take away from this? And so some of the thoughts that came up with the Two of Wands being the man that is standing in his own castle uh, with two wands and he's holding the world in, in his hand and, and the other hand is the hand where he recognises that there's still so much to accomplish, there's still so much to do um, and he's eager to do it. But the the energy is sort of more or less pointing to, well, it's it's time to just kind of take a bit of a break. And I think that's a very interesting concept because there's been so much um, force of energy being dispersed on a number of different levels and people are literally exhausted. There's no question about it. You know, whether you are protesting, whether you are not, there's, there's this um, exhaustion taking place just because of everything that's um, being amplified, you know, literally on a daily basis. So the two of wands, he's saying to us, look, you're in your castle, recognize what you have, recognize what you have been able to create, accomplish and things like that. Um, and take some contemplative, um, take a contemplative position, take a bit of a, a back step, take a bit of a back seat, reflect before you decide on your next course of action, which I think is very wise and is also very much a message of Mars in Libra because Mars in Libra, which is Venus's sign, is a, a very different type of Mars energy. Mars on its own needs to act uh, through action, of course. That's, that's its primary function, to act on things, right? And, of course, Mars being the god of war, uh, passion, desire and will, it has a pretty uh, intense um, magnetic frequency to it which provokes conflict, action and so forth. There's been so much of that going on and Mars in Libra is, is really asking us to be more contemplative, um, more tactful with how we are using our energy and what we are directing our energy to and to, to have more of a diplomatic approach so that we can 
bring more of a, a sense of balance if we can, a sense of harmony and peace if we can. Now remember, Libra represents many things and whilst we may think that Libra is automatically, you know, peaceful, balanced and harmonious, it's not. It's, it's literally seeking to become all of those things and more. So the, the integration of Libra is, is the striving for that harmony and peace. And in Mars, it's very, very challenging because Mars is, has this inherent desire and nature to push and to fight and to confront and to act. And in Libra, it, it's, it's literally the scales. It has to look at uh, both sides. It, it has to look at the whole picture. It has to assess and weigh things up and not rush into any course of action really, but rather be more tactful and contemplative, right? Um, and that's exactly, and, and of course there are all the law issues that are going on, law cases, um, you know, in Supreme Courts, in, you know, whatever, you name it, there's, there's a lot of different things going on on that level and the people that are involved with those things will take care of those things. But I guess bringing it back down to, um, well, there's, there's a collective, obviously, sense of this Mars in Libra. And, the, and Mars was actually conjunct the Sun in Libra, you know, the last couple of days. So that's really amplified an energy that's really quite frustrated, actually, because think about it, Mars is in its detrimental exile and so is the Sun, okay? Mars rules Aries and um, the Sun is exalted in, in Aries. So you can see the opposite sign being Libra, which is the position of where the Sun and Mars are. That's a point of, it can be, um, well, it can be rage and frustration, the polarity Aries, because it doesn't have an outlet. Um, or it can be the position that we take where we actually try to implement a more tactful uh, approach with our course of actions, right? So those are the, the things that I was really reflecting on today. And let me just um, uh, bring up the chart. Uh, let me just see. I've written something here. So I've shared this post in the community and I was talking about um, uh, the most obvious of th this Mars Chiron opposition. There are a number of different levels, but the most obvious being the current narrative, which speaks to uh, strongly to each of us through this portal on an external uh, level where we define freedom. Um, we define, what have I written here? Externally, what we define as freedom has been severely compromised. Yeah. Uh, Mars in the sign uh, that rules Venus places it in detrimental exile, which I just mentioned. And one of the other things with Mars in Libra, quite apart from well, the, the fact that it has to employ a more diplomatic and tactful approach is, is the very reason why Mars in Libra has to act differently. So planets in detriment or fall, particularly in detriment, generally have to find a different mode of operation because they are the planets in a position of detriment are in a, an archetype, a sign that is described by their... their polar opposite way of being right so it's that whole integration of bringing in that polar opposite and somehow trying to balance it out as it were right um let me just uh bring up first of all let me just close this so it doesn't disturb us so i'll just bring up uh what charts have i got here okay let me delete that all right, so this is a chart for today and I'll just animate it and take it to the exact opposition, which is basically here on the 1st of October. So we are in the lead up of this energy right now and the the build up of this energy is obviously going to amplify, you know, um, every day until the 1st of October and then it'll start to just wane off, okay? Um, <clears throat> Now, the other thing that I wanted to mention was Chiron being in Aries, of course, uh, anyone who's around about the age of, you know, 49, 50 is having a Chiron return, right? And so this is um, a 
pretty big year for any of you out there with with this kind of um, Chiron return at the moment, especially given the the nature of reality at the moment. And Chiron is such an important body because it really speaks to a large part of our spiritual evolution and consciousness. Literally, it speaks to those things because if you think about the the planets in in the solar system, right? Um, right from the sun through to Saturn, which are the more, uh, well, they are the traditional planets, that the planets that have been able to be seen with the naked eye for, for a very, very long time. Uranus, Neptune, Pluto were discovered much later. Um, so that's an implication, a direct implication of the masses, the, the, the consciousness of, of the masses being ready for any particular body that sweeps through. Now, Chiron swept through in 1977. But anyway, the point is this, that to get to access Uranus, Neptune and Pluto, we've got to work through Chiron issues. We've got to work through Chiron in our chart. And that is a really painful area to go into. It's never an easy area to go into. Some people have it in more challenging positions than others, for sure, because it depends what house it's in. It depends what aspects it has, you know, if it's conjunct your sun, your moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, it's felt extremely personally. So there's a lot of different layers to understand about that. But Chiron energy, in order for that portal to be activated, we've got to go in there, literally dive in and confront the very things that we don't want to, you know, that are painful, that uh, we've sort of you know, suppressed, that we've, we're denying or um, unconscious about or, you know, whatever it may be, right? Just it depends on the individual. But ultimately, Chiron is a body that's there for the collective conscious or collective unconscious. So we all need to be working with this energy. When we can work through these uh, much deeper components of what's extremely painful uh, inside our soul, as it were, inside our heart, um, that it, it opens the doorway to access the portal of Uranus and then Neptune and then Pluto, really, you know, because Chiron is referred to as the rainbow bridge because it bridges us from Chiron's position into the, the portal of Uranus. So it's a very, very important body. And it's, you know, it's it's very interesting to me that we get to the age of about, you know, 48, 49, 50, and you have your mid-Uranus op um, opposition at the age of 42. And if you haven't worked out a lot of things by that stage, you, you get a, another sort of shock, if you like, Uranus connects to shock, um, when you have your Chiron return, because it's, it's, it's unavoidable you know, um, how it shows up and, and how each one experiences it is very different, of course, because it, it depends on what's going on in your life, who you are, the work, you know, the inner work you've done and so on and so forth. So anyway, the point is Chiron transits always uh, provide an opportunity to dive deeper into what might be just so painful to, you know, to, to sit with, to be with. And it's not, it's not a place we want to be all the time. It's very, very intense and there's, you know, there's the right moment, there's um, right passageways and things like that. And I think with the Mars transiting Chiron opposition, very interesting actually, I was reading the, um, the Sabian symbol for 11 degrees of Aries. Now Chiron's been sitting on around about 10 degrees pretty much all this year and it will be there until February 2022. And I was pretty blown away when I read the Sabian symbol because it, it, it just, just describes what's going on, <laughs> uh, literally, like literally. Um, okay, let me just read it to you and you can think about it yourself. So I'm reading out of my usual Sabian symbol book, Dane Radia and Astrological Mandela. I'm reading the 11th degree of Aries, which is the degree we would look at in order to um, establish some kind of meaning for what uh, Chiron at 10 degrees of Aries is speaking to. Now listen to this. The ruler of a, na of a nation, that's the, the heading for the Sabian symbol. The key note is the power 
uh, resulting from the formal integration of the collective desire for order. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> At this stage of the cyclic process, the symbol refers to the appearance of the personal ego and the central manifestation of a type of order which transcends and seeks to rule the emotional and instinctual drives of the individual person. Actually, the ruler at this social, political and mental level of integration is often the one who is being ruled by collective pressures. Nevertheless, a desire for a larger type of integration has now emerged. It is no longer biological impulsive Aries or emotional personal Aries, but social collective and inst institutional. <laughs> At this ego level, laws and the restrictive power of a police are dominant features. Bang, right? That's, that was just like bang. <laughs> especially with um, here in uh, Melbourne, Australia, I'm sure a lot of you are aware, you know, the spotlight is um, really uh, focusing on this land, this city at the moment. And let me tell you that in all honesty, what's been presented in commercial mainstream media is, is just, it's, it's nonsense. It's nonsense. The fact is that young people, mothers, children, grandmothers, you name it, they have all participated in a movement of freedom. That's all they've done. There, there are a few little, you know, circles here and there of young guys who are full of adrenaline, you know, real Marsy, Pluto, Aries, Scorpio type of guys, Uranus, the rebels, that have been cornered like a lion when it gets cornered what do you think it's going to do it it when when its livelihood is completely threatened it's going to fucking attack so yeah we've had little groups and pockets of little situations erupt when they've been shot with rubber bullets because that's what's happened so Anyway, I find this this uh, Sabian symbol quite interesting. Uh, it literally, literally says that, um, I just want to read that again. Um, Nevertheless, a desire for a l larger type of integration has now emerged. It is no longer biological, impulsive Aries or emotional, personal Aries, but social, collective and institutional At this uh, ego level, laws and restrictive power of police force are dominant features. I mean, like shit, you know, that's absolutely freaking literal. Psychologically speaking, this means that the integrative principle is the limited, more or less narrow I am realization. It manifests itself as a personal ego exerting its will to control the reactions of the bio psychic organism. I think that Sabian symbol is really telling. And at the moment, it's incredibly powerful through the activation of this Mars opposition to Chiron as well. So, I mean, there are so many people on the planet at the moment feeling incredibly wounded Chiron relative to their autonomy, Aries, independence, Aries, freedom, Aries. The Mars in Libra, the fight and battle and conflict for fairness and justice, which doesn't seem to be on the table. And this energy is very, very raw in the ether. So collectively, and in certain nations or cities or states or countries, it's a lot more acutely felt because of the narrative and the manifestations of things that are going on, such as Melbourne, Australia, which is uh, seems to be the most targeted uh, place at the moment for some reason. There's probably many reasons to that, but that's another story. Um, so 
in addition to that, I just wanted to also mention, um, let me see, before I talk about some of the spiritual components, the other things that are interesting to pay attention to as well, not necessarily within the context of Mars Chiron specifically, but within the context of 2021, is uh, Neptune, transiting Neptune all year has been sitting at the midpoint of Uranus and Saturn. That's a very important midpoint. In addition to that, ironically, Neptune is also sitting at the midpoint between Uranus and Pluto. So Neptune has this almost subtle which it is a very subtle energy anyway but it has this subtle um, impact and influence on things that are dissolving through the uranus saturn square and through the midpoint of uh pluto and uranus as well now pluto and uranus both have to do with revolution transformation and evolution right so there are there are things dissolving neptune in ways that we can't actually see that are assisting the necessary evolution and revolution there's that which is hopeful and then of course there's the other side of neptune which brings up disillusionment despair disappointment relative to our perceptions and ideals we think one thing is going on and yes it is but there are so many other things going on as well that are not visible to the naked eyes and we forget that because we become so uh, overwhelmed through the the current narrative and that's completely understandable we've been going through this shit for two years and it's just amplifying every single day and becoming worse as it as it appears but nothing lasts forever nothing is permanent and of course this too will shift into something else right there's there's huge implications of things going on but i just wanted to read to you the meaning of neptune at the midpoint of saturn uranus it's um very interesting okay so reinald Urberton. Uh, a combination of stellar influences for those that are interested in the book that I'm reading out of, Cosmobiology, which is basically midpoints. Uh, Neptune at the midpoint of Saturn and Uranus, the inability to face emotional stresses. Duh. Well, you know, given the um, pressure that the human race has been under for nearly two years, uh, it's no wonder that there is great difficulty in dealing with emotional stresses because there are so many of them. There are people losing their lives through suicide, you know, <laughs> through the liquid um, insertion. You know, the, these are facts. That They're just facts, okay? Young kids losing their life. Um, that's that's very emotionally stressful, dist you know, distressing, isn't it? D doesn't that emotionally distress you? It emotionally fucking distresses me. Anyway, um, falsehood or malice caused through weakness. Now, I find that very interesting. Falsehood or malice caused through weakness. Now, I see that you can interpret that in a number of different ways. But relative to the context, the narrative that's playing out, I see that as the falsehood of a narrative that exists, the malice intention behind it. Now, call me a conspiracy theorist, call me whatever you like, I don't care. Um, caused through weakness makes sense. People are being coerced to comply. People are not being self empowered. They're not being encouraged to stand in their truth, to stand in their sovereignty, their God-given right. Their, their, their liberties and their self-empowerment is being squashed. <laughs> so there it is, okay? There's Neptune at the midpoint of Saturn Uranus playing into this, okay? 
Um, and finally, what else does he say? Uh, the abandonment of resistance, weakening strength, separation, mourning and bereavement. Doesn't sound good, does it? Now, this guy is from Germany, from an era back in the what, 30s or 40s where, uh, you know, World War, you know, things like that. So very black and white. Um, but I, I actually love that book. It's It's just, it's so literal sometimes in terms of what it speaks to and, and how it actually does show up. Of course, so I did say that on a, on a more transcended level, Neptune is also the planet here that is dissolving both through Uranus and Saturn as well because they are in square aspect together. We have one more of that square aspect in December and I, I really feel and relative to the astrology, you know, moving forward, we've got a lot more to endure, to overcome, to be challenged by, to be confronted by. And so the inner warrior is what you, I feel, what we all really need to cultivate and really tap into because the external reality will not provide the sense of opportunity or ability to act on things as quick as we want or or in the exact way that we want to at the moment right but that then what that does is it pushes us back into ourself to actually get more in touch with our own inner spiritual warrior okay the strength and power that resides inside every single human being at a soul level at a heart level is a lot more powerful than the external tyranny that's being projected through saturn in aquarius square uranus but we forget that because we've been cornered and pushed and slammed for nearly two years and you know that's a pretty um manipulative sort of plan if you like to you know to uh, to create a, a, a life where people are just thrashed and smashed and exhausted. Of course, people are going to then, you know, give up or get down on their knees, so to speak, you know, but there are the, the there are many that are fighters, that are warriors that will not give in, will not give up, will not comply and good for them. <laughs> and we need, we need those people. We need them. This is a the, the most massive, most, the, the, the biggest, you know awakening that that is 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 happening you know let's let's get real okay this is it so back to mars chiron i would suggest use this energy to retreat withdraw recharge now that doesn't mean giving up giving in but it does mean taking a greater dive into your own inner spiritual warrior and the strengths that are connected to that. We all have it in a different way. We can all bring it out in a different way. We can all understand it in a different way, feel it in a different way, but we can all do something with that, including for ourselves and for the world as well. So this is a, a beautiful energy. It can be very raw. Um, and uncomfortable as well because it can just trigger and tap into some pretty raw, volatile anger, suppressed anger, Aries, um, Mars, in the process of trying to take a course of action towards certain things and feeling um, not able to do so exactly in the way you want to and that's mars in libra we've got to use mars in libra in a very different way remember i said before that planets in detriment need to be used in a different way what does that mean in a different way well it means that in libra mars cannot act in its inherent nature as it normally would like to which has its pros and its cons because um on the one hand it's not so wise to be totally rash and impatient and impulsive and explosive um, with certain measures measures and actions at the moment. It's probably a lot wiser 
to come back to a point of sitting on the scales and weighing things up, you know, um, pick and choose your battles as well, you know, think about, um, contemplate, come up with more tactful approaches to the course of action that you wish to take. There's all of that. And then there's the very raw, deep, personal sense of um, pain that we feel around wanting to <coughs> wanting to take charge, Mars, to protect, to defend, um, to self-empower and just feeling this um, push-pull, polarised sort of energy with that, right? But we can, we can use it in a, in a productive way by taking a step back and that's what the Two of Wands was suggesting as well. You're in your castle, whatever that castle looks like, doesn't matter. It's a metaphor, right? <laughs> so just think about where you are and what you have, what you've created, what you've uh, accomplished and take some rest, take some respite, you know, recharge. This is a good time to be doing that. And what's going to happen down the track, which I'll come back to talk about that, is that um, and this is going to be an extremely volatile energy and uh, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit concerned with this. This doesn't look good to me, okay, but um, let's see. 21st of October, transiting Mars is uh, squaring Pluto and opposite Eris. So basically we have a T-square being activated through what you could say are very malefic energies in in the position of how things are in the world at the moment. On the other hand, they do also bring a sense of power, willpower, empowerment, transformation, courage, strength, um, determinism, you know, determined to just push through and we need that. We, we need to push through in our own way with whatever we choose, whichever path we take, it doesn't matter. That's your business. What path I choose, that's my business and so forth. The point being though that a Mars-Pluto energy can be utterly destructive but can also be utterly determined to the absolute hilt. And so it just depends how this energy is going to disperse on the ether of the earth and the consciousness of the souls and in the hands of um, power trippers. That's what concerns me, the power trippers. And Eris, of course, is the goddess of discord and destruction. And there was one other thing that I, oh, I have to get that book, just I just want to read this and then I, oh, well, that's if I find it now. Gee, where was it? Um, see, I had all this earlier when I did my audio on all of this. <laughs> um, hmm, I reckon I'm not going to find it. It's going to be a little bit hard because uh, this is a new book, so I'm not too familiar with where everything is, unfortunately. Sorry, just bear with me. Shit, this is taking too long, isn't it? Oh, hang on. Oh. Nope. Ah, shit. Oh, it's not back there. All right, forget it. Just let it be. Um, if I find it, which I will, I'll... And if I have some time, I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll just uh, write the. It's a small paragraph. Perhaps I'll write it 
in the description of this video, okay? And just note that that was a relevant point that I was uh, wanting to share with you guys. Um, yeah, okay. So there were a few other things that I mentioned in my audio, but I, I can't remember them now because I don't, I don't, um, I don't sit there and write word for word what I'm going to discuss. Uh, I've just got a, a couple of points in, on a piece of paper in front of me. There you can see it. There's hardly anything on that. Um, and so typically I just allow things to rise in, in the moment and that's all that's coming through for now. So I hope, I hope this was helpful and um, you can think about it uh for you for yourself and 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 how it speaks to you um i was just thinking as well that like for for myself for instance um <laughs> mars is uh in libra it's squaring my own mars so i'm feeling uh, yeah i'm just feeling this tension you know um admittedly i am in an environment where there's extreme tension there's there's been war zone scenes out in the streets and it's not an exaggeration it has been that um tankers you know anti-terrorist tankers and craziness you know for, for for people who are just standing up for freedom you know it's diabolical disgusting disgraceful that's all i can say to that hmm. uh, but yeah i was just thinking transiting pluto for me is in my 12th house right and that's a that's a really big deal on an evolutionary level if you've got pluto natally in your 12th or if it transits your 12th house in your lifetime it's 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 a big um evolutionary uh cycle that's culminating coming to a close but outside of that and and that i'll talk to you about that for hours but pluto in the 12th is um this this uh undeniable uh intensity that i feel about the whole planet about the whole world and and everything that's going on like i'm it's i i can't i've never felt like this in my life i don't think i've ever felt such a sense of well when my dad transcended yes i did feel this actually so yeah well and it's it's just well it's been a continuum because my dad only left four years ago that might sound like a long time to some people but to me that was like yesterday so it's been a continuum this is while pluto's in my 12th you know just feeling this these undercurrents these unconscious undercurrent this heaviness this stuff that's going on in the the deep psyche of the soul of the planet and every soul on here i'm telling you it's it's really really intense and i i have to do things to try and actually you know bring myself back into some ground point it's just you can't explain it unless you unless you've got pluto in your 12th house or pluto transiting your 12th house you, you know what i'm talking about but um not only that it's right on my mars as well so boy i tell you what it's um <laughs> it's a very difficult transit um so uh yeah i'll leave it there i think is there anything else that I needed to? I'm going to come back and discuss that that T square with Mars, Pluto, and Eris. But I, I, I'm warning you: uh, be aware of this date wherever you are. Just, just be aware of your surroundings, especially given the nature of how everything is. If you're in an environment where there's some threat or danger being posed, I, I'd be very careful around those days with those sorts of things. It's not a it's not a joke and it's not a light energy at all. Um, but I'm just going to hope that it's going to bring something, um, something better for all of us. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to go and do some other work. <laughs> Whew, um, see you guys soon. Much love and stay strong. Stay strong, stand in your truth always.